I've had early access for about a month now to one of the most comprehensive AI platforms that I've ever tested out. It's called LTX Studio, and I could finally share it with you in this video. Now, LTX Studio is an AI platform that could turn a text prompt into a complete video, but like nothing you've ever seen before. This is an all-in-one platform, and it's from the ideation all the way to a final video. And I'm gonna show you this app in full detail, but one thing that really sets it apart is it's created by a company called Lightrix. Now, Lightrix is probably one of the oldest companies in AI. They've been at this for about 10 years. They made a really popular app called Facetune. They made Photo Leap, they made Video Leap. So they're an AI first company for a long time and they're the leaders in the content creation space. So I used LTX Studio in this video and I'll show you the step-by-step -step process to create a comic book style trailer. So I'll show you a quick preview here and I'll show you the full video at the end. I never expected that my creation would become something evil. The AIs, my creations, had evolved into conscious beings. When I discovered the government's plans to exploit them, I knew I had to act. Let me jump right in so I could show you the exact platform here and all the things you could do. Right now, I'm doing similar processes using maybe five, six different AI tools. This is a platform that does everything and more. So I'll show you step by step. I'm really excited, obviously, to use it. My background is in filmmaking. I went to film school, been a filmmaker for 15 years, and this allows me to tell stories in a whole different, unique way. Now, here in the platform, it's really simple when you get started. You just have a box here, and you just have to type in an idea for a video or for a film, and it's gonna go to work. And now this is designed more for storytelling and filmmaking with some more advanced option that I'll show you, but I'll simplify it even if you have no experience in filmmaking. But all you have to do is simple one sentence, or a full synopsis text here. And I have one that's about a paragraph long. And I just came up with a simple idea that kind of combines a couple of my favorite movies. But this is a computer programmer that finds out that the government is building a AI replica of our globe in order to run some tests. And then he finds out the people in that world don't know they're in a simulation and he wants to put a stop to it. Now, in a few seconds, I'm gonna get this box that gives me some really unique control. So I could type in cinematic inspiration here with a couple of words. It's done a good job, futuristic, cyber, thriller. And next, you could change the visual style. So if you don't want photorealistic, which is cinematic, kind of gives you a photorealistic look to your movie, you could do 3D modeling or anime or comic book. And look at this. Look at the amount. I'm just look at how many different options I have over here. This is the most complete set of options I've seen when it comes to visual style for any type of movie that uh, we want to create or any type of video aspect ratio if we're creating a movie 16 by 9 is correct but let's say what if we're trying to do something vertical for some kind of social media platform that needs vertical right we have TikTok, we have instagram reels youtube shorts this is one of my favorite parts about this app and we're only on the first page but right here it's going to create characters for you with different names here now within each of these you have a lot of control let me just press edit here for example, you could change the appearance, the clothing, and the voice. Okay, so let me just play one just so you hear it. If one is lucky, a solitary fantasy can totally transform one. How fantastic would that be for a voice of a character or, or the narration voice here? And we could change that, the narration voice. I'll show you that. You also have this function to face swap by dragging and dropping an image here. That is incredible, right? Something that's really been hard to do right now. So if you want this to be yourself, let's say I want to cast myself as the agent here, I could go ahead and face swap that out. And you also have options here to regenerate this. So if you select this option right here, it's going to go to work and it's going to give you a new version of this character here. So this could be a new version that you could use and you could create new characters. I'll show you this in another page here where you could type in all the different things. But right now, these three characters is all I need. I'll press start. Okay, now the first time I saw this page, I was completely blown away. Look at this page right here. Right now, just in a few seconds, it created an entire story for me with all the shots. So let me show you the breakdown. On the left side here is created scenes for me. So movies are created with scenes and inside of each scenes are obviously the different shots that you see over here that make up the scene. If you look on the left side, we have scene one, scene two, and as I scroll down, you, you see the rest of the scenes. I think it makes six or seven different scenes. This one has seven different scenes here. And if I go all the way back to the top, within each scene, I have my different shots that I could control. 
And if you look on top, you have storyboard mode and you have shot editor. And these are going to give you some controls individually that I'll point out right now. Let's go over the storyboard mode here. You could craft out your story and alter anything that you see. This makes editing the easiest that I've seen on any platform. All you have to do is if you want a shot to be a different shot, like the order of shots, you could just grab a shot, drag it. And now shot two is the new shot three. And you see it changed it automatically here. It really is that simple to change the order of shots. And you could do the exact same thing with scenes. So if you want scene two to be scene one, you just drag and drop and look at this whole page comes up over here. Now, it's not only created scenes and shots, it's created other elements like music voiceover and things like that too. Let me point that out. And what's great about it is pretty much everything I'm showing you is almost completely customizable. You could make any type of alteration to every step, which I'll show you. But background music, typically, let's say I'm making a trailer. I make a lot of AI trailers like this. So let me press play on this music that is generated for us. Okay, perfect. The tone is perfect. You could also upload a new music here, or you could type in a text prompt here and press regenerate to generate a new music here, generate a music or choose a file. Very straightforward. I love that you could upload your own file. Let's say you use a different app or you have royalty free music that you want to upload. Now the character creation that I showed you in the beginning, you could choose to add new characters here and choose an appearance, type out a prompt here, choose clothing, and then choose a voice. You could again, listen to any of these voice to see what's a good fit and then add a new character. And it's going to go alter your entire story, adding that character into it automatically, which then you could customize. In this case, I'm going to leave it, but that is the option I wanted to show you from here. Typically, it's easy to start with three characters and add more as you think more about your story. Now voiceover. So you have characters. These are the three characters we have and their voices. And you also have narrator here that I played a little bit before, but you have a lot of different narration options. Okay. And on the left side here, this is really cool. You could change every scene. You could change the location and the lighting too, and you could just type it in. And even if it's outside, if it's raining, for example, you could type that in and it's going to be generating that for this entire scene. Okay. That's really cool because scenes typically have to have the same kind of lighting, same kind of mood, same character consistency. You see, this is the same guy right throughout this whole scene. And then over here, it's going to have voiceover. So right now, this character is the voiceover Alex, and it's going to read it here. So let me just press play. I never expected that my creation would become something more. Okay, let me get to the more exciting parts, which is each individual shot here. And you could alter each individual shot and a lot of customizable control. So edit frame is going to take us to that page. But before we go there, basically, this starts with a single frame, one image, and then we could generate a video from that. And then we could edit that shot too in the shot editor, the prompt. This is basically the prompt that's going to get your person to do whatever you want. So focused expression. And then if you put the at sign here, so if I just type in the at mention sign, you could get the characters that you've developed. And if you don't have enough here, you need another one, go and make one under the characters tab. Okay. And then over here, this is really awesome. This is just basic cinematography made easy for just about anybody. If you want the shot type to be different, this is a close up. Look at this. If I click here, basically every type of shot that you could get out of a camera is going to let you choose it. So if you want a super close up of the eyes, for example, medium shot is kind of waist up or something even wider than that, or bird's eye view. Establishing shot is something much wider to establish a scene. You could choose from any of that. So let's go to a wider shot here and see what we get here. This is a medium shot. And as you can see, we got kind of a wider shot of the room. And typically I found that if you really want it to be much wider, some of these other options like establishing shot are going to get you what you want. In this case, I'm going to go back to the close up and you could see it remembers the previous shot that was generated. And I'll show you in the shot editor how you could choose between them. And then I could go to the next shot here and then decide what I want to happen over here with this shot if I want to change the prompt. So very fine tuning. Or you could just keep the version that it creates for you, or you could click this right here and this will generate a new image here based on this prompt. Okay. This one is good and it's very quick. It just takes a few seconds here to generate a new one. And then down here, the motion scale. So I'll do it with this one here. So if you press generate video, it's going to turn this image into a video, but the motion scale is how much that video is going to move. Now, 
based on these type of trailers that are created, these kind of short films, I typically like to keep these type of settings low because I don't want a lot of motion. I don't want anything to morph in a weird way. But this is a whole slider that you could practice with and see what works for your scene. This really depends scene to scene. It's really depending on what kind of story you want to tell. And then I could just press generate a video. And this is going to just generate this one specific shot. You could do this for every shot and you could change the motion scale here depending on what shot you're working on. So let me go ahead and let this finish up. And again, it took a few seconds and you can see very subtle, just a quick blink over here. Very natural, right? Sometimes if I go really high, the person is going to move or they're going to get out of the shot or going to morph. We don't want that. So I like to keep it here and let's go to the shot editor now. So I would basically go through scene by scene, shot by shot. Even this plus sign right here lets you add a shot in between shots and it auto creates it for you here too, without any prompts, just analyzing the rest of your scene. And that just happened in real time, by the way, you see how fast that was. If I go to the shot editor, let me just go to the shot editor tab right on top. We are on the very first shot that we changed into a video, right? A simple blink over here of Alex, our main character. But on the very bottom, we have our other shots, which right now are individual still frames. You see it says shot two still frame. I haven't generated the video on it yet, but I have all my shots over here. Now with shot three, we had all the different options as we had on the other page, but we have a lot of different motion controls now that we didn't have. So generating the video from this page might be where you want to do it because you get a lot more control besides just a scale that we had before. I could do camera movements here. Look at these custom camera movements. If you know anything about filmmaking, you could dolly in, you could track left and right, you could pan, tilt, so, so much control here. You could do extreme, let's say you're doing a car chase scene here. So all these controls, the duration of the shot is changeable, the sound effects. But this is one of my favorite parts again here. I could actually start with a text prompt or I could upload an image that I already have. So that is really interesting to start with an image prompt instead of a text prompt. Now, let me show you this really cool option right here under edit frame. It has something called in painting and magic eraser. So you could remove or add things with a text prompt. So let's say I want Alex to wear glasses here. Okay. Or sunglasses, sunglasses. And I could just generate from here and it's going to add it in a few seconds. And look at that. Not bad. Right. And if I change my mind, I could just go ahead and cancel or I could regenerate with a new text prompt. You could do this with the eraser tool, too. So you could erase, let's say, this computer and generate that as well. So that is an incredible tool that you could do inside of any given frame here. And I ended up doing a really subtle movement and you could also change the duration here to two seconds. But all your other previous generations here, I just tested out the different uh, frames, still frames for my starting point here. But the one I started going with here is just this very subtle movement. Again, practice here based on the different settings do you have depending on your scene. And again, you could generate multiple different things and see what's best. Now I could go back to my storyboard and anything that has that little play icon, that means it's been animated and you could regenerate the video if you don't like it. Anything that doesn't have that, that means you need to generate the video still. Once you go ahead and export and preview up here, it actually does generation of all your videos at once, but that's not going to get you the best results. You really want to go through individual scenes here and ind individual shots and actually alter your videos that are generated to make sure you got the best one out of the few different generations that you create, depending on what kind of scale and slider setting you have. Now, this is one really cool part about this. If you want to change the whole style of your video here, you could actually go to the project settings and change the visual aesthetics of it. So if you wanted to get, for example, a comic book, this actually might be better as a comic book type or as an anime. You could go ahead and actually alter it here and apply it and it's going to change your entire movie. The one thing that doesn't change, though, is all your prompts, all the different music, all the different voiceover. Those are the same because I only altered the visual style of the video. And look at that. This might be actually a better way to tell the story. I think I kind of like it. Let's go ahead and press preview and export here. And again, as you can see, none of these videos are generated yet. So I'm going to actually dial down the motion slider. So when it goes to generation, it's going to keep it a little bit simpler here for me. And this is the export page. So you could actually take your video off this platform. All the different shots in all the different scenes are going to get animated and rendered. 
I didn't animate them individually, which is what I recommend, but just for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and render this out. I wanted to show you this in real time before I spent a lot of time actually tweaking it. Let me press render and it's going to be added to the render queue. So we could go back to work It's actually rendering over here. Now, while that's exporting, I made a couple of small changes here that I wanted to point out. So I moved some of the scenes around. So I have a nice establishing shot, then kind of a more wide shot here. And then I go to the close up of Alex and if I just show you how fast this is to alter the prompt, let's say this room is filled with computers. This is what I typed with large screen showing green and black text. Let's say I want blue and black text instead. I'm just typing it in. And as I type it in, I didn't actually press anything. As I change the text here, this goes to work. And look, same composition. And I could just go ahead and generate the video and it's going to be a whole different look. Obviously, I could change it with all these shots. So they have a pretty consistent look to what the monitors are showing with that simple text on the computer screen. Let me press play on this now. And you could see I have the slow dolly push in here. So it's dollying into the room. Then it's going to go over to Alex. Then it's going to go to his close up and pulling to the computer screen. So this is cool, but I'm going to go back to green and black look at that that because i did it before look at this let me just show you the real time change here how great is that this is because i've done it a couple of times before to get different variations but he kept the composition and he just changed that one little detail and my export just finished so let me show you the preview i never expected that my creation would become something evil the ai's my creations had evolved into conscious beings. When I discovered the government's plans to exploit them, I knew I had to act. I sought to create a sanctuary for them, a haven away from the government's reach. But nothing worth fighting for comes without a cost. As I faced powerful forces and wrestled with profound questions, I realized that in this digital exodus, I wasn't just fighting for their freedom. Okay, that's not bad. And I let the AI take over a lot of the heavy lifting. I haven't really customized this. I'm going to go and change some of the images a little bit more, change some of the motion, change some of the voiceover. But just to show you, this happened in real time. I now have something that's somewhat usable. I could post it on YouTube to get exposure. I could give it to an executive to maybe turn this into a comic book or more of a motion picture, whatever direction I want to go. And LTX Studio has started letting people in from the wait list. So make sure you sign up. I have a link in the description that they gave me and you could join the wait list and you could get access. And I want to thank Lightrix and LTX Studio for introducing me to this platform, for sponsoring this video. It's been really interesting just having the ability to do something that I was using five, six different apps to now do in one. Really, really interesting. Really excited to see where this goes. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.